Hey guys, welcome to my yearly 10 under 10 episode. Today I am in the Richmond district in San Francisco. Very rainy afternoon, trying to do some street photography, not being very successful, feeling not super inspired. So I decided to do a little bit different of an episode. I haven't done this for a while. I think it's been over a year, but I always wanted to do this once a year. This is gonna be my 10 under 10 episode. This is where I tell you 10 channels that I really like that have less than 10,000 subscribers. I like following channels that are just getting started. I like the raw nature of someone who, they don't have an agenda yet, they don't even really know what they're doing. They just feel passionate about a subject and they just wanna start a channel. And there's something beautiful about that to me. Um, I, I almost get more annoyed by channels where there's kind of this manufactured enthusiasm and um, I don't know, I don't wanna to be too hypocritical here, but, uh, but you all know what I mean, where it almost feels fake or it feels like a job, it feels like something that they've um, been working to refine and polish through years of work. I mean, that's great too, that's fine. But I, uh, I don't know, I, I really just like channels that give you just what's in their heart. They're super vulnerable, there's something about a channel just finding its way in the world that I think is really cool. So with that in mind, I wanna tell you some channels that I found recently. Um, since last time I did this, it's kinda of sad to see. I think I did a 10 under 10 um, night photography episode maybe a little over a year ago. And it's, it's sad for me to see several of those channels just kinda of lose their way, lose their interest and, and not keep up with it. But. Um, I've chosen 10 new channels to talk about this time. So what we're gonna do, because I'm feeling not super inspired with my street photography, uh, but I still wanna get some shots, is I'm gonna, I'm gonna list a channel, tell you why I like them, and then I'm gonna take a photo before I tell you about the next one. So I'm gonna, my goal here is to find 10 shots, 10 shots that I'm happy with in the hour or two I have this afternoon to take some drizzly, miserable, San Francisco Richmond District photos. We're not gonna go in any particular order, but the first one I wanna mention is a new up and comer. Uh, I said that not all these channels are super polished, but his is the exception. A lot of polish, a lot of, uh, a lot of production value there. And this is John Branch IV. John Branch IV is a really talented wedding photographer and his channel focuses on all things relating to that. As much as the art, he talks about the business and the tools necessary to be successful as a modern wedding photographer. But he also shoots with Fuji gear, which I like seeing. So many wedding photographers seem to thumb their noses at us APS-C photographers. But John sees his choice to shoot Fuji as an asset rather than a limitation as a wedding photographer. But beyond all those things, he just presents himself really well and is definitely worth your time to follow. By the way, this is a just a little precarious umbrella GoPro, uh, rather large zoom. But enough about that, let's talk about our next guy, our next 10 under 10, and that is Mick Millman. There are plenty of channels out there doing the type of videos that I do, coming at you from more of a hobbyist or prosumer perspective. There will never be a shortage of voices like ours, but Mick is something different. He's a professional photographer struggling to keep afloat as both a freelance photographer and a photo educator. I like how honest he is about that struggle and the perspective he has. I also really enjoy when he talks through his celebrity and event shoots. Just go subscribe to Mick, tell him hi for me when you do. He's a good guy. Next on our list, Actually, we need to take another photo first. Just not, not feeling it today. I guess I should also mention though the, uh, the gear. Um, oh, cute dog. Hi, buddy. can never take a bad picture of a dog. 
Anyway, what was I saying? Gear. I'm shooting with the uh, 16 to 55 on the XT3 because I need a little bit of uh, weather protection out here in this rainy day. Um, somebody on Instagram was pointed out that I've been posting some, uh, you know, non 18 to 55 zoom lens photos. I'm usually an 18 to 55 lens guy, and they were, they felt like I wasn't being true to, uh, yeah, to that lens. But it's not weather sealed, so. That's why. Well, and I, and I just want more shutter time with this. I need to know if my choice to use the 18 to 55 over the 16 to 55 was founded based on more than just like assumption what other people have said. So I, I, wanna, I wanna get to know this lens a little bit more. Not sure if I'll keep it long term, but you know, I need to, I need to shoot with it. All right, so we've got, got a few photos. Guess it's about time to introduce you to another up and comer we've got. Um, the Photo Depot. This is Christopher. I'm trying to coordinate shooting with him while I'm out. He's actually, he's actually a San Francisco guy. Christopher of the Photo Depot starts off every episode telling you what he's drinking. And sometimes he's awkward in front of the camera, but in a totally endearing way. Christopher is also somebody trying to make it in the world as a professional photographer, and I have huge respect for anyone doing that. He shoots with film and the Fuji X-Pro2, and he also has an ongoing relationship with one of my favorite photo shops in San Francisco, Glass Key Photo. So that gives him access to a lot of really cool film camera gear to review and try out. Um, but yeah, I love his stuff. I like what he has to say. I like that he's vulnerable. He doesn't have any pretenses. He's just like, hey guys, this is me. I'm here to tell you about my cameras, and I just like him, and I like his photography work, and you should follow him too. manual focus really hard <laughs> got him uh, the big takeaway here is manually focusing uh, while holding an umbrella and a GoPro doesn't work very well that's my street photography tip for you today so all right I guess we're ready for another person. Who we got? Um, Sweet Lou. Sweet Lou Photography. This guy's name says it all. He's a sweet guy with a lot of personality, a lot of humor, a lot of irreverence too. Sweet Lou is more than just a YouTuber, he's also a good friend. He's a New York photographer and filmmaker. His channel is about photography, but it's an eclectic variety show focusing on humor, memes, and the review of affordable photography products. I am going to be honest here, I think I am too old and un-pop social media culture to get all of the memes and the social media culture references that he gives, but I don't think you have to be up on all that to appreciate his personality and to see the thoughtfulness he puts into his reviews. Follow Sweet Lou, tell him Andrew sent you. Live long and prosper. This car. I have a lot of respect for channels that are dedicated to film photography. Essentially, they're trying to grow an audience on a platform that is dying and I think that or not on a platform is dying but but with a subject um, which is I guess you could say dying although some will argue there's a resurgence happening lately either way I think it's awesome that shows that, that they're really passionate about the art pushing film as best as I can tell is the work of a few individuals but mostly Hashem and Sarah who are film photographers in Melbourne Australia and on their channel you'll find interviews guides and reviews but what I most like is when they take you along for one of their shoots like their two-part series in Japan that they recently did Okay, I'm taking some more photos. I guess it's time to give you another name. And next we've got another overseas guy. And I have to say, I really am drawn to the channels that, uh, that are not like me, <laughs> not, 
the Amer there's so many Westerners, so many uh, in England and in the US and in Canada that are doing the type of videos that, that you know, that we're doing. I, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, obviously, I wouldn't do it if I thought that there was, but I really enjoy the channels where they live off the beaten path, and um, this guy is, is certainly no exception. His name is Noe, I think. I found Noe's channel about a year ago when he commented on one of my videos. When checking out his fledging channel, I was struck with his unique style of photography. While his content was certainly raw to begin with, I did find that his style of cyberpunk or neo-noir photography was simply stunning. Noe is very free with his information, showing step-by-step -step Lightroom tutorials as well as taking his subscribers along with him when he shoots in South Korea where he lives to show how he's able to capture the style of night photography. I really appreciate that it's something unique and different than every other YouTube photography channel. So I'm a big fan of his channel, his Instagram also. Totally give him a follow, tell him Andrew sent you. Oh, is that a, is that a laundromat? I love laundromats. Gotta shoot the laundromat. The next channel I want to tell you about is also a recent find. This is the channel of Adrian Vila, who is a landscape photographer living in Spain. Now, I realize that there is no shortage of landscape photography channels on YouTube, but there are several reasons why I really like Adrian's channel. One of those is that he's in a different part of the world that you don't normally get to see. I also like that he just shoots with very simple gear. He's got the Bronica 6x6 medium format camera, some old Sony, and, and that's basically it. That's all he needs, and it's refreshing to see an extremely talented photographer like this shooting with super old gear and in an extremely interesting part of the world. Also, he just has a really cool accent. Good morning, everyone. It is freezing out here, but it is so beautiful. It is kicking up out here. My arm is about to give out. An umbrella and a GoPro in the same hand, man. Uh, it's hard. It takes its toll on a weak, muscled arm like I have. I don't want to shoot into a bank. They always get suspicious. Like I'm up to no good. While we're here in this peaceful little solitude of this back alley. I do want to tell you about someone who brings a little peace and solitude to the lives of all those who subscribe to him. And that is our friend David Dixon. David, what can you say? I mean, I told you I like channels where people are vulnerable, where they're not afraid to be themselves, to get real with you. And his channel, man, more than just about any other exemplifies that. And that's because not only does he talk about photography, but he talks about depression, which is not an easy topic to talk about. Uh, not everyone's first on everyone's list of topics to head to YouTube to hear about. But, but man, David, he's a good photographer, a great guy, um, well-spoken. But like I said, he's really trying to find a way to do good with his camera. I just respect that so much. And I just want to say, go subscribe to David, give him your support. He has a Patreon. If you or anyone you love has dealt with depression and also has a love for photography, well, this channel's a no-brainer for a follow. So, uh, David, yeah, man, keep it up. Love you, man. I'm gonna take a shot of this now. I just got some shots of the most beautiful little bulldog and its owner. Of course, the GoPro wasn't rolling. I thought it was, but it wasn't. Oopsies. Next on the list, though, we've got Daryl Carey. I like Daryl. Um, I don't know where he gets his money because he always seems to have the latest and greatest gear. What pot of gold he found that he could get everything, buy everything, but I want it because I have the same issue where I, you know, I buy too many things. But it seems like if it's a camera that came out recently, Daryl's got an opinion about it, uh, which is cool. But even more than that, he's just a cool guy. I enjoy listening to him talk about gear because I'm a geek. So if you are a geek, who likes new gear and you like to hear about that gear with an Australian accent, I think, unless it's New Zealand, because I can't tell the difference, then you should follow Daryl and you should tell him that I sent you.
Next on my list is Jonathan Notley. I don't really know much about Jonathan because I only just found him a little while ago. Um, but I feel like he, uh, I feel like he's the real deal. Uh, I like his style. I like where he shoots. He seems to have a pretty cool studio. And I like that he shoots film and that he has some very intelligent things to say about it. So um, Jonathan Notley, good guy, give him a follow. All right guys, last on my list is my man Scott Graham, who if you do Fuji, like I do a lot, talk about Fuji, you consume Fuji content on the YouTubes, you'll have run by Scott's content, probably. If you haven't, you should. Good guy, uh, has a lot of nice things to say about a gear that I use, and so his content's valuable to me, but even more than that, I just like him. So Scott Graham, everybody, give him a follow. Say hi for me. Okay guys, I think I'm done here. Mostly, maybe, maybe a couple more shots, but but mostly, mostly done in the Richmond area of San Francisco. I like it, it's a nice area. Uh, I feel like the inspiration slowly seeped back into my uh, bones the longer I was here, in spite of the rain. Uh, there's a lot of hustle and bustle in this area. Come here in an afternoon, a weekday afternoon, if, if that's when you're here in San Francisco and you want some street photography. And most people think about like the financial district, Union Square, Chinatown, or you know Fisherman's Wharf, that sort of thing. But, but I'm glad I came here this time. Yeah, cool area. Anyway, I hope that you found some folks, some channels that can inspire you in your photography and you can have long-term lasting YouTube relationships with. Uh, but either way, thanks for, thanks for hanging out with me as always. And remember, kindness before cameras. We'll talk to you again real soon.